Okay, hello and welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to JFD Traders Tea Time with me, that is on Charles, because today's the 27th of March 2020. So, yep, welcome everyone. Welcome to this um, Friday's recorded session. Um, and welcome to the last Friday of this month. So, yep, um, I hope you're all staying safe, guys. Um, as always, we're going to have a quick look at the charts, uh, a few instruments. Uh, but before we do that, uh, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So, the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, a few seconds for you to read the rest, and we can continue. Okay, so also just before we jump in, a uh, quick mentioning of our JFD YouTube channel to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos. Um, and of course, our JFD Bank website and specifically our JFD research page, which we update on as well on a daily basis. So yep, feel free to visit us here on uh, JFD, uh, JFDBank.com and click on the research tab right there. So, um, just a quick update on what's happening here with the coronavirus. And so, let me just refresh the page. Um, so, this morning, I mean, it has definitely has grown. Grown, the number has grown, uh, and we're now at um, five hundred. Uh, well, five hundred and fifty thousand. So, basically, not not really looking good. And we have already uh, managed to grow almost almost by a thousand. Uh, deaths uh, globally. So um, again, the numbers are not really looking good. The, uh, today, as I've mentioned uh, this morning in my video, in, um, today US managed to surpass China by the amount of infected people. Um, now in terms of deaths, deaths, uh, United States is still, uh, let's say, uh, lagging behind. Uh, if we can, if we can say that, um, but um, yeah, we one thing, one thing for sure, we know that Italy and Spain are really um, kind of, uh, let's say, suffering from all this. Um, if, for example, Spain managed to control uh, the amount of um, deaths. So the percentage managed to drop in Italy. Uh, the per that percentage, uh, the, per the death, the death ratio continues to kind of let's say slowly rise because currently it's around uh, ten percent um, and. Uh, or even around 11%. So, yep, guys, continue. Let's continue observing that number. Um, and but for now, it's not really looking good. So let's have a quick look at the markets. Now, the markets are uh, looking at the European ones. Uh, here, specifically, the FTSE is taking a dive. Um, this morning I talked about this one and I was telling you guys to keep a close eye on this downside line and uh, keep a close eye on the uh, 5,789 zone, which as you can see was broken, but uh, then the index quickly reversed back down, dropped back below this downside line. Uh, but what I was talking about was that uh, in order for us to get comfortable with, uh, let's say, lower levels, we needed to see a drop below the 5,500 zone here, and then we could aim for uh, for further declines. For now, it's uh, it's a little bit tricky. Uh, as you can see, this is the where it it's currently finding support. This 5,500 zone. Um, just to show you what that level was in the past, let me just scroll back here a little bit, and uh, basically that's the lowest point of 2016. So, yep, guys, for now this is where the index is currently stuck at. Um, let's see if 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 it can close uh, the week below it. If it can, then yep, I expect maybe some downside going into next week. Um, the German DAX, uh, it's a little bit better, I would say. It's holding on to, uh, to well, it's not really declining as much. Um, it did have a decline, but uh, compared to the FTSE, it's still kind of holding in there. Um, 
the same idea remains that the one that I've mentioned this uh, this this morning. Uh, what we need here is a break of, th of, of a few of our uh, key support or resistance levels. Now. In terms, in order to consider some downside, we would like to see a drop below this little territory here, uh, which is around the 9,141 zone, approximately around there, and uh, then we could consider some downside because this would uh, kind of place the um, place the price back below this downside line, and uh, well, it could drop below this key area of support, which previously acted as a good area of resistance, then also support, and now, like I said, if it, if it breaks here, then yep, uh, further declines could be possible, at least towards these lows these uh, current lows of March because we have to say that it's current because we still have um, a, a f two f two full days uh, to go through in, in next week uh, of March and uh, yep we ev everything could change then so yep guys for now uh, that's why we're gonna refer to these levels as the current lowest points of March um, but as I said we will consider this target only if we get a drop below the 9141 zone in order to aim for higher levels we need to see a push above the Mm, 10,280 zone and only then we will aim for the upside because that's the lowest point of 20, 2018 and if we get a nice push above this this would also place the price above its 21 EMA here shown as the yellow line here um, I don't know if you can see it okay but it's there basically so this 21 EMA uh, on a daily chart here um, could be also a nice gateway uh, to some higher levels if it gets broken. Uh, the S&P 500, so um, it opens up lower. Um, now, for now, as you can see, this is what I talked about this week, basically. And uh, as what I said, that even if it drops, uh, or should I say, even if it cl climbs above this uh, long-term upside support line, which is better has better visibility here on the uh, monthly chart, um, you can see this this upside line taken from the lowest point of October 2011 here. Um, if the um, if the uh, what I was saying that if the price climbs above it but struggles to overcome this downside line taken from the high of the 20th of February, now this is where it could t turn out to be ugly for uh, for the bears uh, for the buyers again. And uh, well, I mean this is where uh, the index could start sliding lower, but. Uh, <clears throat> Looking at this situation here, um, again, for now, we will probably remain a little bit more on the neutral side because what we need here is, uh, in order to aim for lower levels, what we'd like to see here is maybe a drop below this little territory right here, which is around the uh, 2,455 four zone so roughly around there um, because this would also of course automatically place uh, the price back below this uh, long-term upside line and uh, if it also falls below this 2454 zone then yep uh, we will aim for the downside again um, for now all this is where the index is currently stuck in uh, stuck in and uh, it's stuck above this upside line but stuck below this downside line as well so uh, long story short uh, we remain neutral for now and we're waiting for that clear breakthrough one of these levels in terms of the upside now previously I talked about this level here the 2,729 zone, but uh, given that we have shifted a little bit to the right here, um, in order to aim for for the upside, uh, what we'll start looking at here will this will be this high, the high of yesterday, um, which is roughly around the 2,637 zone. A nice good push above this would also kind of mean that the uh, index managed to break this downside line, and yep, higher levels could be met. Um, but again, uh, uh, for now, it seems that it's well, it's sliding lower, but let's let's not forget that this is just the market has just opened. Maybe we could see a nice reversal back to the upside here. Again, for now we remain neutral because we need to see a clear breakthrough one of these levels uh, before kind of considering. Uh, before considering, uh, let's say, a further directional move, at least in the short run. A quick update on DXY. Uh, this is what I talked about this, uh, this this morning, and basically what I was saying, that we may get that correction to the upside, which we are seeing right now, yes. Uh, but what I was also saying, that if it struggles to overcome this territory here, the, the area uh, around the 38.2% uh, retracement on the Fibonacci and the 99.91 uh, level, 
well then yep if it struggles to do so then we could see another round of selling here so for now it's working according to plan we are getting a hold up near this territory Let's continue observing this one. So basically, if we see a daily candle here closing above the 99.91 level, then there could be a possibility for this one to uh, to push higher. However, um, as I've mentioned as well this morning, that um, for us to get comfortable with the upside again, we would like to see at least a push back above the 111.15 zone or this 23.6% retracement on the Fibonacci. And then, yep, we could aim for higher levels. For now, uh, we are still more bearish than bullish. And uh, but we're keeping a close eye on this 99.91 zone um, or this 38.2% uh, retracement on the Fibonacci. So keep your eyes on that one. Uh, now Brent, or oh, sorry, Brent, WTI oil. Um, so here, um, not all is looking good and uh, WTI oil is taking a hit. Um, it's sliding lower now of course the day is not finished and this is where one should be uh, one should remain cautious because um, we have a very important level here of support uh, at, at around 20.08 uh, that's the basically that low that was reached um, the, the low that was reached this month um, again as I said we still have a few days left uh, to trade in in March so that's gonna be next week but it's gonna be very interesting to see where this uh, commodity will end this week because if it stays still above this uh, this let's say even we could round it up towards this, that psychological 20 mark if it continues to balance above that uh, psychological 20 mark then well there may be uh, still not all is lost for the buyers however if it suddenly starts dropping below that psychological 20 zone well I mean this is where it could turn out to be ugly for uh, for, for WTI oil and uh, we could see further declines and this is where we'll start considering these levels uh, levels last seen in 2001 or even to or even 1999 or even 1998 so as you can see the, the lowest point of uh, the lowest point of 2001 um, it was around 17.12 zone so it, it was somewhere around here and in a way if we do get that drop below that uh, psychological 20 zone then yep aim for that lowest point of uh, 2001 which is around the 17.12 zone roughly around there uh, again if that fails to withhold then yep further declines are possible um, the other kind of important target to keep an eye on is the lowest point of 1998 and that was around um, the uh, that was around the 10 mark so ten dollars and uh, 65 cents per barrel that's the, that was the low the lowest point um, uh, it had it, it reached a kind of for quite a while I would say and uh, last time it was well as much as we can see here from the data uh, last time it was at these levels was um, around 1986 so um, 86 80, is that correct yes 86 so um, basically since then the uh, the commodity rebounded as you can see heavily uh, to the upside and during the crisis period the previous crisis period the uh, the price managed to uh, drive all the way here to uh, even uh, to the hundred, above $150 mark so again for now um, it's going to be very interesting very attractive of course don't get me wrong it could present itself with this nice opportunity however don't rush into this yet we rather wait for a confirmation break and then kind of act on it but uh, for now um, like I said it's very difficult here and um, if it suddenly starts dropping lower here below this uh, psychological 20 zone then well I mean brace yourselves we could see a bit of a further decline uh, Bitcoin so I haven't looked at Bitcoin for quite a while and uh, here this is a daily chart and uh, I'm looking at the Coinbase exchange here right now and uh, the Coinbase pricing now uh, of course, um, overall, it's kind of still on a decline. It's still trading below this downside line taken from the high of the 24th of February. Um, however, this is still considered to be a bit of a tentative line. As you can see, we only have two touches. The uh, the price right now is 
I would say slowly climbing higher but um, uh, today we're seeing a bit of a decline here and uh, what we're going to do here is we're, we're going to keep an eye on this upside line taken from the low the 13th of March and uh, if we get a break of this of this line and if we see the um, the crypto uh, sliding be below this little territory right here around the 6441 zone or in a way you could round it up towards the 40 um, then yep this is where it could turn out to be ugly for Bitcoin and we could see this one drifting a little bit to the downside here maybe going back towards these lows the low of um, the low of, of this week which was around the 5678 zone or even going further south however for now guys continue observing this upside line uh, the scenario that I've just mentioned is the uh, the alternative scenario for now because uh, from the very short term perspective I need to point this out because still we are as long as we remain above this upside line we will continue targeting the upside where the upside might get limited near this downside line so that's why from the very very short term perspective there is still a chance for this one to drift higher however if this breaks this upside line and we see a daily close below this upside line or and below this uh, 6,441 zone, then yep, uh, we could aim for further declines, guys. So keep your eyes on this one. And um, AUDJPY, so one of our favorite uh, risk sentiment uh, measurements um, in the market. Uh, so basically we have the commodity linked uh, Australian dollar and the safe haven uh, Japanese yen. So as you can see at one point, of course, it was climbing higher uh, on Wednesday. The uh, the pair managed to even overcome this short term tentative downside line taken from the high of the 21st of February. But as you can see, uh, it was just a brief visit here higher and uh, still <clears throat> the pair closed below it below this downside line and uh, it, it wasn't able to overcome this downside line on Thursday yesterday and today as well again for now I mean the day is not finished but looking at this picture <clears throat> there is a potential for this one to drift lower however um, we will we will in order to get a little bit more comfortable with the downside we will wait for a drop below the 64.92 zone here which is the low of uh, yesterday and then we could aim for uh, further declines for now we will probably remain a little bit more on the neutral side because in for us even to consider the upside here uh, we would need to see a clear push above the either the 67.37 zone which is the high of the 16th of March or a push above the high of this week uh, probably this would be a little bit more ideal uh, which is around the 67.70 zone and then we could aim for uh, for a larger correction to the upside because let's not forget that we're still below this downside line taken from the high of the 16th of January so keep your eyes on this one. Uh, USD CAD so um, we're getting a bit of a, um, a weakness in the Canadian dollar and well that's understandable because the Canadian uh, the, this Canadian Central, Central Bank uh, just about an hour ago some uh, came out with the um, with an announcement that they are cutting their rates again so uh, basically that brings it from the 0 0.75 uh, percent to uh, plus 0 0.25 percent so it uh, it's, has been one on the lows um, so it has, it, it's basically the low it has been uh, lowest it has been um, but um, for quite a while I would say then yeah um, but um, Looking at this picture here, you can see that USD CAD managed to managed to accelerate to the upside. Um, today, this morning, I was looking at this one. We were still hanging around this 100 EMA, and what I was saying that, um, in a way, even if we see a push higher, but if the pair struggles to overcome this 1.4145 zone, then well, I mean, this could lead to another round of selling. Um, now, at this point, I mean, looking at this picture, if somebody is more on the cautious side, what they could do is just just wait for a drop below the uh, today's low, which is around the 1.3986, uh, because a drop below this would confirm a forthcoming lower low, and uh, yep, further declines could be possible. However, uh, if you're more on the riskier side, uh, risky side, then yes, uh, keep your eyes on this little highlighted territory. If it continues to hold, then yes, we could see a nice round of selling here. However, we'll be very careful and cautious, and of course, we'll have a stop loss in place just because uh, this could easily then reverse 
let's say, or sh should I say, just in case it reverses sharply back to the upside here and, and pushes above this highlighted area and then, yep, so that we wouldn't get uh, stopped out much. Um, so um, if this pair travels and stays, if let's say at least a four hour candle now stays above this 1.4162 zone here, then uh, we could aim for a bit of a larger correction to the upside here. And the reason why I'm saying correction, because you can see for obvious, obvious reasons that we're still below this little downside line. Uh, taken from the high of the 19th of March, um, but again for now it's too, like I said, too early to talk about this um, this up move here unless we get a nice at least a four-hour candle close above the 1.4162 zone, and then yes, we will aim for a bit of upside here. Uh, GBP Euro. Now this is something that I looked at this morning, and just a quick update: um, we are man we managed to break this this barrier here, the one that I talked about this morning, the 1.1110 uh, zone. And the yep, if 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 it contains if it continues to uh, to trade above this barrier, then well, I mean the next target for us is around the 1.1305 zone, which is the high of the uh, 13th of March, and uh, that's not far from that 200 EMA on the four-hour chart. So yep, keep your eyes on this one, guys. For now. Everything's looking more bullish than bearish on this one, but um, however, like I said, let's see how this is going to play out. And uh, yes, let's see how this is going to play out. And um, well, I mean, for now, like I said, we're more bullish than bearish, especially um, especially if this uh, rate stays above this 1.1110 zone. Um, Jumping into GBPUSD, uh, here the situation is a little bit complicated. Now, um, the pa the 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 pair managed to travel above this key area I talked about previously. So let me just refresh the memory. Um, so the 1.1950 was the lowest point of 2016, um, and the uh, the 1.1880 zone that was the uh, the low. Uh, of April 1985, and just let me just double check this very quickly. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, sorry, May. <clears throat> that was the lowest point of May. So, um, as you can see, the uh, the pair managed to drift back above the territory. Um, of course, some positive. Of course, this is uh, seen could be seen as a positive. However, um, if the uh, if the remaining two days uh, will manage to keep um, the pair above this territory, then uh, the remaining two trading days in 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 in, Mar in, in March next week, yeah, uh, if they manage to keep this. Uh, the, the pair above this territory, then yep, maybe we could see a, a bit of a correction here to the upside, going towards this downside line taken from the high of the uh, of the highest point of November 2007. Um, but if the suddenly, let's say, the pair starts pair starts sliding again to the downside um, and and stays below this territory, this highlighted territory, well, I mean, uh, further declines could be possible going into April, guys. So yep. Keep your eyes on this one. Very interesting developments here. Uh, let's see how this is going to play out. And finally, Euro USD. Now, for this, let me just jump back into a daily chart. Um, today, we're seeing a bit of a decline. Um, probably let me just jump into four-hour chart as well. Um, this morning, uh, I was talking about this level here and uh, this 1.1087 zone. Uh, what I was saying that if we, uh, if if it continues to hold, then we could see a bit of a, a decline here. We we could test the uh, the 200 EMA. So as this is for now working according to plan. Uh, we've tested the 200 EMA on the four-hour chart. Uh, we've also tested this 1.0990 level, um, and as you can see, the the pair is trying to move further down. However, uh, what I was talking about was that uh, this area here was, or should I say, could have been a very nice area of support. Um, don't get me wrong, the, the candle is not finished yet, so uh, we'll see how it's going to perform, but most likely it's going to stay, right? It has got a lot, around one minute left, so it will probably stay below this. Um, so in a way, in this situation, what we're going to do here is we're going to aim for a little bit lower. Uh, we're going to aim for this upside support line taken from the low of the 22nd of March, and if this upside line holds, then yep, we could see another round of buying. But if this upside line starts failing and the rate starts sliding below the 1.0888 and stays there below this, um, this is where it could be very interesting again for the sellers. And we could see this one sliding 
to the downside here for now let's stay careful and cautious uh, let's see how this is gonna play out but uh, yep, for now, uh, like I said, we are uh, a little bit, let's say, more uh, cautiously bullish because we're still above this upside line. Um, let's see how this is going to play out. And uh, now, the big, again, like I said, uh, this may continue drifting further south uh, because you can see that the uh, the four-hour candle is kind of continues to drift lower, and uh, we only have about 20 seconds left until this could, uh, where, uh, well, until this candle finishes. Uh, but uh, yet, like I said, most likely. It will remain below this territory, below the 200 EMA on the four-hour chart, and if so, then yes, um, uh, we we will aim for a bit of declines, for a bit of further declines towards this upside line, and uh, yep, from there we'll we'll take it further because again, if this upside line holds, we could see a nice rebound and a push back to the upside. Okay, guys, I really hope you found it useful, and uh, thank you very much for watching and listening, and thank you very much for staying with me this whole week, and. Uh, yeah, guys. Um, again, I would like to apologize for not running this uh, these videos live right now because, well, I mean, due to certain circumstances, I'm not capable of doing that right now. Um, and uh, well, certain circumstances, of course, uh, staying at home and working from home. Um, but um, yeah, guys, I really appreciate your time uh, watching the uh, these recordings, and uh, thank you very much for all your uh, support. Uh, but yeah, I hope you have a fantastic weekend, guys. I know maybe uh, it could be a, a little bit of a boring one if you're staying at home, but try to make it fantastic. I mean, the weekend will be uh, as exciting as you will make it. Uh, so, yep, guys, uh, like I said, have a wonderful uh, weekend. Stay safe, and uh, we'll catch up on Monday at my Trader's Espresso uh, and uh, catch my video around nine o'clock oh sorry seven o'clock uh gmt time or maybe a little bit after that and uh yep uh we will resume uh our market review then have a nice weekend guys and bye bye